度相对是比较低的。那么。这样一家公司，但是它的盈利指标又是非常的好、嗯，所以当时大家对于这一个强烈的对比是有一定的质疑。对，这个是构成了最初的质疑。好，那这个以后再展开交流啊。那么下面呢，我们将会进入到的是 CEO on CEO， 今天专访的是易康集团首席执行官道格拉斯贝克。Can you tell me some information about uh Ecolab for the our audience and the Chinese people to more details about your business in China? Yeah, well, our mission. In the world and in, and in China, is really to help our customers and society have cleaner water, safer food, abundant energy sources, and healthy environments. And so we leverage those industries to make a difference, really across the business、uh, industries that you can list, anywhere from extraction industries to steel and aluminum making to refineries to food production to agriculture. To, uh, hotels and hospitals, given that we're in the food safety and the、uh, hygiene business.、Uh, how how did you grow?、Uh, by acquisition or by the organic growth? Yeah, we grew really both. We grew organically. Our stated strategy was circle the customer, circle the globe, which really meant build out our array of programs and services to help our customers succeed. When they succeed, we succeed, and as they expanded geographically. We've expanded with them. It's a very good way to expand because you have a natural business base as you enter a new market, and you can build from there with a, I would say, kind of a profitable start. So that's worked very successfully. But we've also made a number of acquisitions. In the last 13 years, we've bought all, almost 75 companies. The biggest acquisition was six years ago, and Nalco really gave us. More significant water technology capabilities, which was important to us because it was important to our customers, and so that was the li- the, the largest, latest acquisition. The acquisition and especially the merger of the two companies,、uh, the business and also the manage- management structure as well as the the culture is very difficult. How how did you do that? Well, I think you brought up the thing that can spoil an acquisition most easily, and that is. Cultural problems. Can the two company do the two companies see things similarly? And I think those are important questions to ask before you do a deal. So everybody focuses on the financials. That's not that complicated necessarily, but the cultural collision, if that's what it's going to be, can be a real problem. We work very hard to understand the two companies' cultures before we try to put them together. What what is similar? What's dissimilar? Do we think we can overcome? What may be between us and, and drive to one, and then finally, I think you have to have a common vision. So people like to move towards something, and you don't want everybody focused too much on the past. So we work very hard to to create a compelling narrative about the future. Why are we better together? Getting bigger is one thing, but what you really need to do is get better as you get bigger. And if the acquisition's not doing that, not improving you, then I would say skip it. How important is China's market to the eco labs, the global business? I see. Long term, we believe there are going to be three mega markets in the world. There's going to be U.S., of course, Europe, but China. And and if we expect to stay number one in our markets long term, then we have to be number one in each of those markets. So so those three markets, we believe, are absolutely strategic. Really important to us long term, so China is vital to us. So now that and、uh, the three industries you mentioned, for example, food safety, hospitality, and as well as, as well as retail, it's more dynamic in China than in other places in the world. So how would you、uh, harness the opportunities in China? What's the different strategy you are going to use? Well, I mean, some of them are being created now. I would say we are executing known strategies that we know have been successful, while trying many different things. So, a big food delivery business is is being created in 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 China, right? And and so, understanding what needs that drives, how do you partner and understand those needs in a different way? What are the food safety challenges? And how can partnering help? I would say further food safety in China. So there's a lot of opportunities that are coming from the new businesses that are being created here, that 
we look at as a great opportunity. Ultimately, I think the other markets will start mimicking China and China's development as, as all markets always do. And so learning and understanding as these are developing here, we think is critical to our success, not only in China, but also in other markets long term. So what kind of the uh, partners you want to cooperate with in China? You know, in China there are two uh, the giants, though it is very young. One is uh, the Meituan, another one is Elema. Which one have you visited and the founders of these two companies? As I sit here, neither, but, but as of tomorrow, I'll have a different answer. Um, but in the meantime, we are, we are um, partnering with currently and working to develop technology together. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating company that's had huge success. We want to learn from that, but we also want to lend our expertise, and we are working together to understand what are the specific challenges that, that we uniquely together can solve for China and for the customers that both of us serve, and also what are the unique challenges that just food delivery creates over time. And so for us, it's a great learning opportunity, both how people think about scaling businesses and moving businesses, and what they've built in such a short time is phenomenal. I mean, we're envious and interested in learning. At the same time, we want to lend our expertise in helping, helping Mintuan succeed and also understanding how we can help their customers. Now the tech is a catchword, right? And almost in any industry, any company, people has to talk about the tech. How you leverage the tech for your future growth? How you leverage your tech to deal with the uh, uh, disruptors? So, is it the case for the uh, your industry and for the EcoLab? Well, I think everybody can be disrupted, and so if you assume you can't, I think you're starting from a point of weakness. So absolutely, I think as you look at the new capabilities that just digital technology brings and represents, I mean, you, your business is a terrific example of that. How do you leverage a technology to first improve what you do, but second, I think discover how do you do it completely differently and how do you deliver value to customers that maybe you couldn't before, but digital enables. And so we're investing heavily in those capabilities. We're not new to this. I mean, we've been in the Internet of Things for, for a long, long time and are already monitoring 35,000 large industrial complexes remotely and have been doing so for over 10 years. And that enables us really to provide great value to them and a great learning base for us. So this is technology we want to build on and knowledge we want to build on. But we have great additional, we have data, we have knowledge. What we need to do is leverage the technology, improve our ability to leverage the data and the knowledge to our customers' advantage. If we do it first, we'll be fine. Because China is um, somehow it is very unique, my understanding, because it has the uh, largest uh, the food packaging industry in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the largest uh, beverage the industry in the world, as well as the hospitality, because given the size of the China's right. dem demographic, so what? More and more, the multinationals are looking at the, what is the unique opportunity, unique products, unique services, unique technologies, the R and D inside China. What do you expect from in terms of the, the, this this kind of the innovation? Mm. Well, we too have innovation center in China in, in China. Shanghai, okay. so because we do agree with that, and so well, we've seen a number of specific needs in the beverage industry there's much more propensity to, to reuse bottles here than there are in other parts of the world. And so that brings a lot of challenges, i.e. you gotta clean them, you gotta, you gotta make sure that they're sanitized, and you also have to handle the wastewater that's created as a part of this process. And so those are needs that are quite unique to China, and we have to develop programs that work for the bottlers in China, otherwise they're not gonna have the same efficiency as people who aren't operating with recycled bottles. So there are a number of unique needs. In terms of just market size, I think the scope and scale of this country are immense. The diversity of this country are immense. You have, I would say, a huge number of small local businesses. At the same time, you have the largest, most sophisticated operators in the world. And you've got to be able to meet the, both of those needs to be successful in this country. And so it takes different technologies, different deployments to do that. One, one deployment, one technology is not going to meet 
any market need in China because of, I think of the diversity across the board. Moving the China's market is growing very fast, and as well as the economy is becoming more sophisticated and more advanced, which also means there might be more competitors to Ecolab. How do you take on that? Well, I don't know. We've always had a lot of competitors. You know, everybody probably dreams of a world where they're the, the only offering. Um, that's not a world we've lived in anywhere. So we expect to have competition wherever we compete. Our focus has got to be on being great for our customers. And we've got to be looking forward, not, not looking in the rear view mirror. And if we continue to do that, take care of customers, understand their needs, understand the environment, understand the technology, I think we're going to be fine. If you start worrying too much about what's going on around you and don't take care of your customers, you're going to have a problem. So our focus is understand the market, look forward, invest, develop, and life should take care of itself. 好，刚才我们看到的是 CEO on CEO 环节介绍了一下这个易康集团的发展战略。好，最后我们看一组五间公司公告，之后是首席评论。